attention starts where intuition stops, but still it's a very important personality trait, giving you the capacity for a long-term sustained attention towards an activity and the ability to stick with something for a longer amount of time. So how do you get it and who has it? Let's talk about that in today's video. Which of the 16 personalities stand out for the strongest attention spans and the best ability and capacity for sustained attention? First, let's talk about what I mean with attention. Attention is the capacity towards sustained energy and interest in an activity without losing energy or without fading out or starting to daydream or starting to think about other things. Essentially, imagine you're driving a car, you're behind the wheel, you need to pay attention on the road, but you start thinking about what will happen when you get home. Yeah, the time when you start to daydream or wander is probably the time you want to get out of that car, otherwise you might be in for a major accident, right? So we all need attention to survive and deal with most aspects of life. Imagine you're listening to a teacher hold a lecture in class and you're going to have a test on that later. But imagine that all you do is look outside the window. Imagine that the teacher stops and says, hey, Eric, can you answer this question? And you're like, what were we even talking about? So, who I would I say is the most notorious for a poor sense of attention? Well, it's a difficult one, but let's start with, for example, the INFP personality type. Yeah, the INFP personality type might be the one that struggles the most with sustained attention and energy towards something. But don't worry, it's still very possible to develop sustained attention for specific actions and activities. You, just as anyone, can really learn to drive a car. It's just about knowing how. This is also why I would put the ESTJ on the top. ESTJs would stand out as the people that, for the longest amount of time, can maintain sustained attention towards their external environment and things that happen around them. This allows you to stay productive for longer hours. It allows you to stay efficient in your energy and attention for a longer amount of time. Yeah, there is an efficient range of attention. Imagine that for example, the average person can listen in for 50 minutes to a class or a lecture without losing focus and starting to shut off and starting to be non-resistant. Well, the ESTJ can be diligent and can sit with things longer. They can probably claim to work longer hours. It's easier for them to push themselves and their attention and they have a more focused and control to grasp over their attention. Similarly, for that reason as well, I would say that the ESFJ would have a nice second place. Why second place, you might ask? Well, it's, I would say it's because feeling slightly more boundaries into daydreams and imagination. Feeling is an imaginative function, and because of this, yeah, you might find that ESFJ gets... A little bit less and perhaps for that reason too I would say that the ESTP would come out perhaps even a little bit on top. Why would I say they're on top? Well first leading with the extroverted sensing the dominant function of the ESTP they tend to be people that can keep their eye on the ball for a long time but they need action to sustain their energy and interest they need things to keep on happening so if it's not really active or dynamic content or attention that is engaging for them they might also be a bit bored by it so i think that's a tie but i would say probably the esfj would come out on top here because the esfj can focus on something even if it's not readily gripping or alerting in the same way as it would be for an ESTP. ESTPs might be drawn more to attention that is more dynamic and more rich, while the ESFJ would be able to focus their attention for a longer time on a specific action, right? Now, perhaps because of this, I would also say that uh, we can rule out some other personality types. Yes, INTPs will also tend to struggle with attention and with regulating their attention. A tip for the INTP is make sure to challenge yourself, set goals, 
uh, hold yourself accountable, use Pomodoro timers and other tricks to make sure that you become more aware of your attention. Number one, the first step is become more aware of where your attention goes. Activities like meditation teach us to become more aware of where our attention is. When are we attentive and when do we stop to lose our attention and become unfocused? Notice when your attention is waning and take breaks frequently to ensure that your brain stays fresh and ready for new stimuli. Now, considering all of this, INFJ would get the third place here. Yeah, there's INFJs and INTJs out there that obsess about training their attention. And of course, those are the ones that work on their inferior function, extroverted sensing. Still, even those kinds of INFJs and INTJs tend to be relatively inattentive, but through hard work and effort, they can learn to be attentive and focused on specific actions and specific interests and in specific hobbies. So there are certain actions and activities that can pull the INFJ's interest, but there are also a lot of activities that might make the INFJ really not pay attention. INFJs and INTJs tend to have this kind of focused tunnel vision in how they experience their attention in that, you know, their attention will converge on a specific topic, but will ignore or pretend not to see anything else but that specific action. Still, INTJs should go to the spots number C. INTJs are better at training their attention towards tasks and activities. The truth is INFJs can probably be quite attentive when listening to another individual speak, for example. That's when an INFJ's attention will be the highest. Similarly, an INFP tends to experience the strongest attention when listening, just slightly less than the INFJ. INTJs can train their attention towards tasks and projects and activities and this is very helpful in most practical everyday activities like studying, like working on a task, like working on a project. INFJs are more likely to fall into that feeling, imaginative, emotional driven attention which is a lot more dysregulated than the thinking one. Feelings drive us towards imagining, daydreaming, worrying, thinking about people, facial expressions, tones. And when you feel bad, when you have an off day as an INFJ, yeah, that really makes you lose your entire attention. You become unfocused on the things that happen around you. You fail to focus at work because you're so focused on that feeling or those experiences, right? Given all of this, we kind of know who should go to the second place on a, well, ESFPs. ESFPs with extroverted sensing stand out for a very high amount of attention. It's just that, yes, for many reasons, ESFPs and ESTPs can find their attention moving from thing to thing more quickly. And this is actually a, not a bad thing. It's actually a sign of having a dynamics attention. So the ESFP and the ESTP's attention spans are dynamic, meaning they move to whatever calls their attention the most. The loudest, the most interesting, and most engaging activity in the room becomes the core focus of the ESFP personnel type. But for the ESFP, there's also a higher emphasis on fun. While the ESTP has a challenge-oriented and task-oriented attention, the ESFP has a fun and emotion-oriented attention. So it also has to relate to them personally, it has to connect, it has to be a beautiful color that they vibe with, it has to match their aesthetic, it has to vibe with how they want to be and who they are and how they feel about themselves for them to be able to pay attention to it fully. Moving further down to the mid-ranks here, what personal types might come up? Well. Of course, we can put the ENTJ quite high up, similar to the ESTJ, but with an intuitive preference, you're going to find that intuitives in general have lower attention spans. So they are arguably one of the more attentive, intuitive personality types. Why are they more attentive? Well, it's because they have this ability to discipline their attention and focus it towards specific actions. Similar to the INTJ, they can focus it towards similar actions, but their attention is also more external. It's more focused on the environment, the people around you, the tasks and work that has to be done. And so the ENTJ tends to remain focused as long as there are tasks that need to be done, things that demand their attention, things that require to be dealt with. 
However, our ENTJs tend to often be annoyed by the fact that these things exist. They don't like that there's work to be done. They don't like that there are products to deal with. They don't like that there are things to be done because they want to have it all complete. They want to have it all out of the way so that they can engage in more intuitive exercises. So like coming up with their own ideas, processing, analyzing, and thinking of strategies and things like that. That's much more fun for the ENTJ personnel type. Now, given all of this, we can kind of guess what personnel type might fall onto the C rank after this. Yes, the ISFP personality type. I mean, look at them. <laughs> Here we have somebody that goes all in on emotional expression and living life in tune with how you feel and with what you want to do, which means that most likely the ISFP can be attentive as long as they feel strongly about something, as long as it vibes with them, as long as it matches with them, but otherwise probably not. And you'll also find that the things that vibe with an ISFP are a lot fewer than the things that vibe with an ESFP, for example. For an ISFP, first they have to go inside and think about whether they care about something enough. And then if they care about something enough, they'll listen to and they will vibe with and they'll look for things around them that match up with that thing that they care about. So that's when they really start to pay attention, otherwise they won't. This is kind of directly opposite to the ENTJ that will focus their attention on all the things that they don't like and that they don't want to see so that they can get rid of them. ISFPs will just pretend they don't exist, essentially. Given the, all of this, the logical third place on a A line rank is the ENFJ personality type. Extorted feeling is a function that allows you to really match who you are and your identity to the other person. ENFJs naturally, like chameleons, they shapeshift to fit in with other people. So what you're finding here is somebody that will have the ability to engage with and put themselves in a certain role or a certain identity with other people and this allows them to be attentive relatively to other people and as long as other people are interested in it. Yeah, the ENFJ's attention is kind of interesting in the sense that they are interested in an activity as long as other people are interested in it and if other people stop paying attention to it, ENFJs will probably stop paying attention to it too because then it's probably not important. The ENFJ only cares about things as long as attention is called upon to care about those things, and otherwise not. I take the third place on C rank. Now, yeah, in general, ISTPs can have things that they are completely engaged with and completely interested in, but in general, you kind of have to tell them that they have to be interested in it. And if they have to be interested in it, they will probably complain about the fact that they have to be interested in it. Yeah, oh my God, why do they always make a fuss? Why do they always have to deal with this? Why do they always need me to do this? Why do they always, you know, like this kind of jargon is probably familiar for you if you're an ISTP, because there's this tendency to feel like, oh, other people are always complaining about everything and need to have, needs everything to be done perfectly and always need this and this and this. So where the ENFJ is like, Oh, I'm super interested in sports because you're interested in sports. The ISTP is like, oh my God, I don't really care about this game or this, but because everyone else cares about it, fine, I'll go and do it and I'll listen to it, you know. <laughs> so the attention is a slightly less engaged and a little bit less interested than it is for the ENFJ. That's not to say that ISTPs don't have things that they do care about. Of course they do. It's just that this is usually something they keep to themselves, that they are interested in for themselves because of they are because they're interested in it and they don't usually need to talk about or share that so much with other people. Now let's go on to who gets to be in the B rank. Who is the top of B rank? Who is the winner on terms of ability to pay attention? Well, here I'd say the ENTP, but they are extremely hit and miss in their attention because their attention moves so quickly from different interests and different topics that, you know, they are there for a second at least and then they're super engaged with it, but then they're somewhere else and then they're somewhere else and, you know, often the ENTP's attention, unlike the ESTP's attention, goes to what nobody else cares about. So ENTPs are super fascinated in things that are usually a bit more niche, a little bit more abstract, a little bit more unclear, a little bit new. ESTPs, they're super interested in things that are really popular, really trending, really interesting right now, right? And really engaging. And they have to be very clear and easy to understand too. The ENTP that goes to that, what's that? What's that weird thing over there that I've never seen before? You know, that's what ENTPs will be interested in. And as soon as they have gotten to understand that a little bit and they've gotten a rough familiarity with it, 
well, what's the next new interesting thing, right? But still, ENTPs are known for being sometimes workaholics too. Yeah, lots of ENTPs are super nerds that love to study and read for long hours about all kinds of niche topics and they have an ability to often spend hours and hours and hours studying different things. It's just that they jump from different topics. That's often how they regulate their attention too. Moving on, the second place should go to the ENFP personality type. ENFPs too tend to have a lot of diverse interests but most of the time these interests are feeling motivated rather than challenge motivated. ENTPs are genuinely distressed by the fact that they don't know everything about everything and they want to know everything about everything. ENFPs, they want to know about a lot of things and they are interested in basically everything, especially if other people are interested in it too, of course, and especially if it matches how what they feel and what they think that they are supposed to be doing with their lives, right? But ENFPs, but ENFPs are less challenge oriented. And so if something is perceived as too complex or too difficult or too above their level, ENFPs will probably stop be being interested in it and they'll focus on something that's a bit easier. Bonus point for ENFPs typically being excellent at languages. Moving on from there, we can probably find the ISTJ personality type. ISTJs slightly similar to ISTPs really and they are very close to one another in the sense that you know they will pay attention to it if that's their job and if they have been paid to do it and if that's their responsibility and they find that you know it's important that they do that usually they will have a certain set of things they feel responsible for and they, those things they'll think about a lot and they'll be super attentive to and they'll be super interested in and that's typically the nature of introverted sensing introverted sensing is more particular and it makes you a little bit more conservative in how you look at things. You look at things as long as they require your attention, and as long as there is something that's threatening them or something that's important. But if there is no threat, no reason to care about it, no reason to look at it, the ISTJ will probably stop paying attention to it. ISFJs get this wonderful mid-road position here. And ISFJs, I would say in this case, are people that will care about things as long as other people care about it and as long as it's their duty to care about it. And so it will be this sense of because other people need me to do this, I will do it. And I will shorter this because I know nobody else wants to do it, but I want to help other people and then I will care for it and I'll take care of it. But in other regards, ISFJs are actually way more fun than they look. <laughs> ISFJs have a lot of goofiness to them, a lot of silliness to them. They're not just, uh, you know, the mom that wants to take care of everyone. They're much more than a nurse. They're a person that jokes a lot. They're typically quite play free. And that's really what you see when attention is not so strong, is that a person is a lot more playful and open and a lot more silly in how they approach things. And even ISTJs will have this ability to, outside of their interests and things like that, they tend to be quite anything goes. If it's not within their role and responsibility, they will be a lot more open around it and let things be what they are. So that's how I rank the 16 personalities based on attention. How do you feel about your attention? And which personality type do you find, find to be the most attentive? Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.